walk around like everything is in control Favors come with favors and you can't say no Go out the way to make the coin available That's what I call Dragon Age The closest character's afraid to say they need some time The turnaround is 30 hours and across say that you don't mind Go out the way to say you made the compromise That's what I call Dragon Age One thing I've learned Dragon Age can change with the seasons I can't please Morrigan I can't please Alistair I can't please Cassandra I can't please Liliana Heavy is the head that chose to play the game To whom is given much is required now Heavy is the head that chose to play the game the game will crash, so be sure to quick save the game. Can't please everybody. 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 Can't after the chore that just was Dragon Age 2, I could just not be bothered to start this one, I'll be honest. I just didn't feel like this game was gonna catch me like Dragon Age Origins did, and giving it some time and just reflecting on it, Dragon Age Origins really just is a masterpiece, man. It just, it, it, it really is, like seriously. I didn't know your comments and speaking to all my friends about it and listening to the ways of how things could have went for me and all the things I missed out on. I just had to deeper and just say, listen, that game is a masterpiece and it really is now on my list for one of the best games I've ever played, man. EA would be crazy not to remake it at some point. I know that remake is going to come eventually. And I just don't see Dragon Age 4 just capturing me the same way that Dragon Age Origins did. Listen, games are getting harder to make, so resources kind of get spent in other places like action and the gameplay and the things that we really like, like uh, the, the trees of all the choices you can do, they're kind of they're kind of going. But we are here now. We are talking about Dragon Age Inquisition. The third installment into the Dragon Age series. And I can honestly say, this is a cool game. And if you're new here, these aren't reviews. This is just me giving my experiences because these games are so old and dated. Now me giving a review now kind of seems pointless. So these are just me giving my experiences with the Dragon Age franchise. This is me giving my thoughts, my opinions, my gripes, my loves, my hates, the choices that I do, telling you about the companions, my thoughts about them, just waffling away about stuff about this game. So let's get into it. Now, before I start, I just want to say a big thank you to the Dragon Age community that's been supporting my videos. Because the most popular videos on my channel are these two, but the only reason why they're so popular is because I kind of done them straight away. Meaning as soon as the season ended, or the show ended, I dropped to review the same day. And of course, I got off the hype. The Dragon Age videos, I made these when no one was really talking about them or no one really cared about them. And you guys came through and supported the hell out of it. So to you guys, Dragon Age fans, Dragon Age Reddit, I appreciate you guys so much and thank you, thank you so much for the love and support. Listen, after this, there probably won't be another Dragon Age video for a long time, so if you don't want to subscribe for that reason, I completely understand. But I will be playing Dragon Age 4 and I will be reviewing that when it comes out, so please be on the lookout for me. Be sure to go through my channel, there might be some other videos that you may enjoy. But again, thank you for your time, thank you for your love. Thank you for your support. It means a lot, it really does. All right, nearly five minutes for the intro. We've wasted enough time. Let's get into it. Customization first. And if you couldn't tell, I am a black man. Customization here gives you more than two, thankfully, but it's not quite Origins. You can still choose your race. And again, I went with the good old fashioned elf because I kind of wanted that fantasy racism, do you know what I mean? But the customization has a, like a nice amount of depth. You can actually change your cheekbone depth, uh, nose bridge, face structure, all these different stuff. It has like a nice amount of options here, which I think is really nice. And I think it's actually better than, again, some of the customization we get today. I'll be honest, you can't exactly make someone look like you, 
mainly because of the art style, but because of the art style is so nice looking, which we'll get into later, you can make some really nice characters here. And I'm kind of starting to realize that I don't think I'm very good at making nice characters because every character I make in these video games, like utter crap, they look so weird. This character looks cool, but she looks so miserable all the time. Like the angle of her lips just looks so weird. Like I did try and change it, but I just, come on. But she is like the fourth chosen one. She has a life that she didn't choose. So I guess her being miserable kind of works for the story, I guess. And I can confirm making a black character it's possible. You can actually get a nice skin tone here that actually, you know, looks like a black person compared to Origins, which has more black hairstyles, but I'll take what I can get. It's nice here. Just over the character customization alone, I kind of could tell what kind of experience I was about to get with Dragon Age Inquisition. Because in this game, it doesn't allow you to pick the backstory like you could in Origins. So it kind of told me that they were pretty much going with the action route, meaning that we would be making a character that kind of follows the rules of Bioware's writer's room. But a customization with all the depth and the cheekbones and the blah 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 says to me that we might get a nice amount of options here. It's just that we will be on a railed story. And to me that's absolutely fine. But the character customization here is the best in the series. I, it, it really is really good. Yeah, you can't pick your backstory, but it makes up in other ways because of the extra features. And given the way the story starts, it makes sense. I have one major issue with the character customization menu, and that is the voice actors. My people have found these ambassadors all over the fortifications. Sabotage seems the least of their crimes. That sounds like something I should look into. We're keeping the court waiting, Inquisitor. Shall we? Sometimes it doesn't even seem like the voice actor Inquisitor? even knows what she's responding to. It's not that the voice actors are particularly bad per se, I just that I don't feel like these voice actors get the character right. I played as a female character and her voice actor kind of remind me of a help assistant, like a Google's help assistant for some reason, or a Katana or a Siri. And then I kind of realized that she doesn't sound like those things. So why do I think of them when I hear her voice? So I decided to do a little bit of research and upon Googling the main voice actor for the female, I realized that she plays trainer from the Mass Effect trilogy. And that's exactly why I hear Google's help assistant. Because if you played Mass Effect 3, Samantha Trainer is pretty much your your help assistant in Mass Effect 3. Unless you played as a femship, then you're definitely f***ing her. So it's not that she's a bad voice actor, neither the male, they're not bad voice actors at all. I just don't think they do enough or their voices have enough presence to play a character who inevitably is trying to save the world. There's like a certain tone and a grouchiness that I feel like a main character should have when they're in that position. And again, every time it's time to connect with other characters in this game, I do feel like voice acting wise, they're being completely outperformed by every character that's here. They seem like the most amateur-ish voice actors. I don't know why, and it could just be a me thing. The characters in Dragon Age Inquisition are written really nicely, again, it's not origins. But the voice actors for these characters are really damn good. So you do really notice it when it's time to talk to your main character because, yeah. Hey Siri, who created a Dragon Age series? That sounds like something I should look into. If your Hey Siri just went off just now, I'm so sorry. <laughs> now these games are a few years old, so I understand I might be reciting points that the Dragon Age community has already made, so I do apologize if I am. But it goes back to my original point that I said in the Dragon Age Origins video. There's my two, two gaming hills that I stand, stand on. on. Dragon Age started off as a series that didn't have a main voice character, and I honestly think they should have kept that way. I understand why they did put a voice in there, because it kind of appeals to a big audience, but I just feel like this series, it kind of just was a mistake going that direction. It works with games like Dragon Age, I meant to say Mass Effect. I meant to say Mass Effect there, not Dragon Age. Where the game kind of makes you feel like it's an action slash RPG. So you don't mind it as much over there. Dragon Age kind of just started off as, it felt like you, you were in control. You were in control of the boat, not Bioware's writer's room. So usually a bad character with a bad voice shouldn't bother me that much. But the issue is here is that you kind of need your character to be voiced pretty well because given the story, you kind of need to be a badass. The story is that your main character has to save the world and she is the key for it, or he, whoever you picked. Corythius is kind of a that character that got introduced from back in Dragon Age Origins, the Awakenings DLC, I believe. That's a lie, Corythius is not in Dragon Age Origins. I completely lied to you about that. Sorry. And he's now here again in Dragon Age Inquisition. And he is the main villain of this storyline. And he needs you to die because you're the person who can pretty much save the world and he needs you gone. So in Dragon Age Inquisition, they do the complete opposite almost. You are in the wrong place, wrong time, which is how you got the powers to begin with. But in the end, you inevitably are the chosen one. And how do I feel about it? 
it's fine. It doesn't bother me at all. This game did make me realize that I do prefer the approach of being nobodies and just being a regular person and things just happen to you and you decide what you do in reaction of those things. But it's fine. It's absolutely fine here. So because you are the chosen one, you kind of just need to take a stance. Your character just feels so timid and just shy in the beginning, but your character should feel like she's growing. By the end of the game, you should feel like a leader and a boss and just confident. But it doesn't really happen here. It honestly feels like your character remains the same exact person throughout the whole of the game and the voice actor doesn't help that situation. She sounds shy and timid even at the end of the game. And I don't know what it is with the character's animation and the way she kind of stands sometimes. She just doesn't seem very confident at all. She's like so skinny and slim and you can't change the weight in the character customization, which is unfortunate. It would have been real cool if we saw the dialogue option slightly change and was reactive and just adapted to the way you spoke to people. That would be really ambitious, but that would be like really cool at the same time. So there's a story hit for me. The story's fine. I enjoyed the story way more than I should have really. And I don't mean that in a good way. In my Dragon Age Origins video, and even my Dragon Age 2 one, I kind of said that the main story is just a motivator to keep your main character going. Something to progress to, something that makes you feel like you're just getting through the game and you're about to finish the game, because we all like finishing games. What really mattered was everything else around that main story, such as the companion, such as the characters, and such as the really cool side quests that eventually will affect the mainline story. In Dragon Age Inquisition, that is the complete opposite. Just the complete opposite. For this game, you are very much here for the main quest. The side missions, yeah, they're tedious. They're absolutely tedious. The side missions are pretty much fetch quest out on your main menu, and there are bajillion of fetch quests for you to do in this game. This game took me 60 hours to complete, and I wanna say maybe 10 to 20 of those hours was mainline stuff. The rest of it was pretty much me just doing fetch quests and me to try and get Power. Well, I said earlier that this is a cool game. This game has a lot of flaws to the point where for some people I wouldn't be surprised if they found this game completely boring because in the beginning I was exploring I was doing all the sides and I was excited to see some really cool side quests some Witcher 3 style side quests that would feel like story main quest and unfortunately It just never happened when you first get into the game. You kind of get your first ever place, which is the This place. I can't remember the name this place and I said to myself, okay let me get all the side missions in this area out of the way and then I'll proceed. And ladies and gentlemen, there is a lot of fetch quest side missions in this particular location. My rules is I'm not meant to get any advice when it comes to these Dragon Age games, but I remember telling my boy Fox, yo, I've been here for a while. I've been doing a lot of sides. What is going on? And he kind of told me that that's one of the issues of this game. You will end up in this particular location damn near forever trying to do these side quests. And the saddest thing is, I did so many side quests in this location and I can't remember a single one. Side quests absolutely suck. And it would be okay if you didn't need them to proceed to the main mission. And it's not really just this location, it's very much most of the locations. If I just show you my, 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 my mission list real quick and I just click on every single one and you will see of how many things I have to do that isn't really even that important or even fun to do, it completely destroys the funness of the game to the point where you don't even want to play it anymore. It really is a shame and it's why it was so hard to get through this game, it really was. Because the main missions are really fun. Once you get your 40 power to get to the main mission and proceed, you can't wait to do that. You want to see how the story progresses. You want to see how your characters will talk to you after you beat the main mission and you go around talking to each companion and see what they say, which we'll get into the companions in a moment. Since I've been recording my whole walkthrough, just I think at least two of the walkthrough videos are very much just me just destroying rifts after rifts after rifts after rifts after rifts, all so I could just get the power so I can do the next mission. And then the power thing, I don't even want to get into that because if I get into that, I may end up talking about the war table and the war table is so <laughs> frustrating, man. I'm gonna get into it real quick. The war table is just this thing where you can just do these little activities. What you're really doing is just clicking buttons. But you do these activities so you can get some materials or get some other side missions or more locations. And maybe sometimes the companion side missions are even in there too. The biggest issue with the war table is that you look for your journal, you see something, a mission there, and it says, hey, go to the war table and do this. As the game gets on, you get to the war table and you start looking at it. And you're like, all right. Where do I go? Where's, where, where, where's that mission? I, 
I can't find it. Maybe if I back out, I'm gonna try and find it. Let me go back through the journal and try and see if I can find the mission name to try and find it. And then we go back into the war room, another loading screen, we go back into the war room, and then we say, okay, where is it? Where is it? I can't find it. I can't remember what it was called. And you can't can find it. You really can't find it and it pisses you off. I was done. There were so many times where I had a mission to do that required me to access the war table and I couldn't find it and I completely said, I'm not gonna do it. I can't do it anymore. I'm just leaving it. Hopefully I articulated that well. In short, the UI for Dragon Age Inquisition is absolutely terrible and I didn't even want to speak on the weapons and sorting out the armor for your characters. That's a whole one big mess. But like I said, this isn't going to be a review. This is going to be my experience. In saying that, we can proceed to where I think the game shines, where the game actually improves from Dragon Age 2. And that is your characters and the companions you meet in your journey. It is not much, but I will do whatever. Bro, I think she walks off in this part and her body's like mad stiff. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I remember when I seen that for the first time, I cried laughing. He was like, God, this shit is silly. So the side characters aren't exactly like the game I keep mentioning in Dragon Age Origin, but they are really good and they are really fun. They almost feel like a bit more of a realism kind of vibe in this one, which is really nice. I can't really do a deep dive like I could with Morrigan and Alistair when it comes to these characters, because even when you want to speak to them, they exactly didn't really say a whole lot and they don't really give you a whole lot of depth. But I think it's a nice amount to get you invested in them or at least to make you like them. You may not care, but I think you will like them if that makes sense. But they're cool. I won't speak about every single one, but the ones that stuck out to me was Josephine, which for the first time in this Dragon Age series, I actually romanced someone. Believe it or not, I didn't really romance anybody in these games. Dragon Age Origins, I wanted Morrigan, but Morrigan doesn't like to scissor apparently. So in Inquisition, Josephine, I thought was a really cool character and I thought she was very nice and sophisticated, my kind of gal. So I decided to go with her. Cole was very much of a standout to me. He had a side mission, a loyalty mission, I believe, but again, the war table. Iron Bull was a very highlight for me, just a nice, calm, collected kind of energy, like I already said. Cassandra had a little character, she even gave me a backstory earlier on in the beginning of the game. Now, in my Dragon Age 2 video, I said that Varric was kind of my favorite one, and it was mainly because he was kind of the best out of a bad bunch. I actually didn't really think he was that great. In this game, it kind of confirmed that, because Varric, again, I was he was someone that I felt that was kind of pushed to the side anyway, but I myself didn't really want to go up to him and talk to him too much, because every time we spoke, I just wasn't that interested in what he had to say. Everybody else, though, had their own little character, vibe, energy, whether they're charismatic, just cool, smooth, talkative, interesting, the characters here were actually really good. Bioware got it right with the side characters here. Well done, Bioware. It was actually really nice here. I enjoyed these side characters. And I haven't spoken about the open world yet and the locations and the design. But one of the issues with this game is that your companions don't really talk much when you're out in the gameplay areas. But whenever Iron Bull's on the squad, especially when Vivian's there with him, they really have funny conversations and I really enjoy it. It gives the game a lot more charm and character. Iron Bull. Did you clean your weapon after the last fight? Uh, no. Odds are we're gonna be killing something again in a few minutes. Besides, the bloodstains are good for scaring enemies. They see a big, messy blade and they... You know... Uh, uh, I'll go clean it. Thank you, darling. And obviously there's other characters around that are playable, but you do talk to them quite a lot, who are pretty much your companions as well, such as Cullen, Josephine, and Liliana, which again, they are all great characters. They're very nicely written. They're not Dragon Age Origins, but they are good. It's nice. It doesn't feel cheesy and forced like they did in Dragon Age 2. The writing here has improved for the companions. I came into the game for cool companions, and that's what I got. Speaking of which, Bioware, who created Vivian? Like, I need to know, like... You ever created this character, you guys, you know what I mean? In terms of the gameplay, just real quick, the gameplay was a little weird when I first started because I was so used to Dragon Age 2's and Origins. Dragon Age 2's and Origins gameplay are very much similar. This one kind of makes you feel a bit more interactive with the gameplay because you kind of have to push your WASDs and stuff like that to try and walk your character around. You can't just click and point and she'll just move to it. You won't really use the freezing time action in this one. It doesn't really push you to do that. I didn't really use it in this one. And a tactical view, the bird's eye view, it's very much zoomed in. I wish you could zoom out a bit more to play more tactically. If it kind of feels like it wants to go in more of the action route. What I've heard about Dragon Age 4, maybe that's what they want to do going forward. Cool. Let's talk about those choices in Dragon Age Inquisition. The choices in this one were a little weird. This one very much felt like it gave me some hard choices to do, but I never really felt the ramifications of those choices. Now again, Dragon Age 4 is still on the way and we still could see the ramification of those choices, but this one doesn't really feel like 
it matters too much. The choices felt heavy, but I just never really felt like I was gonna pay a huge consequence. I also think the game just never really makes you feel like you don't wanna burn these connections because you're gonna need them for the end fight. For some reason, the game makes you feel like you're the only one that could defeat Corypheus. So for me, the game kind of just felt like I didn't really need anyone by my side. I didn't really need to build connections or go over to this location to go get allies from this area or allies from that area like Dragon Age Origins did. I keep, I keep mentioning it. In Dragon Age Origins, and I know I'm, you guys are probably tired of me mentioning it, but it does this thing really well where you kind of feel like you have to go from place to place to place to try and build up allies for your fight against the Blight. In this game, it doesn't really feel like that. This game kind of makes you feel like you're the chosen one and you don't exactly really need anybody else. They try and give that effect that you need allies through the war table and the war table completely misses the mark. The only two major choices I can remember in this game was either picking Alistar or Hawk. And obviously I picked Alistar for obvious reasons because it's Alistar, Dragon Age Origins character, the superior game. And the other choices about drinking the water in the well, I think I made the right decision in that one where I decided to drink it because even though I do love my Morrigan, I wasn't sure if I can completely trust her in this game because she doesn't exactly know the Inquisitor. Like, But those two were the only two choices I can really remember like that really had me like, oh damn, what do I do? It was just those two, really. The whole politics choices, which again, the story kind of just feels sloppy and it doesn't really give you much reason to really pick a side. They just seem as bad as each other. But I know I said I thought this game was cool and it honestly just seems like I've just been crapping on it this whole time. I still think there's a lot of highs to the game, but now that I've been reviewing it and editing it and writing my scripts, I do realize that there's just a lot of flaws and the flaws may sometimes outweigh the actual highs of the game. I didn't really even talk about the worlds. The worlds are so pretty. They're very nice to look at, but again, they are just a little bit shallow. It's too much bloat and it kind of reminds me of a Ubisoft game where I just feel like if they just condense their resources and just instead of giving us a lot to do and just gave us less to do and just made those things a bit more quality filled, this could have been an amazing game. Even when it was time to do the last mission, it just felt really rushed. Like I was like, wow, that was, that felt really quick. And my companions didn't come speak to me about the last battle. Like, oh, are you ready? And having deep conversations. I could have spoke to Josephine one last time. It just felt all really rushed. It just felt very rushed towards the end. So the game misses. The game does miss quite a few times and it's just unfortunate because I do think there's a lot of love here. But in the end, I think I would give this game a 6 out of 10.